welcome to the vineyard tonight. We'd like to ask you to stand as we enter into worship. Um, and just a prayer that has been uh, rolling through my mind the past few weeks and even months has just been, Lord, help me, my family, our church, just be a people that is marked by the fact that we just run to you. We run to you, Jesus. We run to your presence, whether there are hard things going on, whether there are good things going on, that we run to you to worship you in the middle of it all. So I know sometimes it's not very fun to wear a mask and it can be hard to sing, but I just encourage you to step into just another another form of worship tonight. You may want to raise your hand. You may want to kneel down. Um, but still sing out, still do whatever you feel the Lord drawing you to and just press into worship. Let's pray and we'll enter in. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are here. And we just say we love you. We love you and we run to you. We run to you in our need and we run to you because you are great and you are all powerful and you are always, always worthy of all our adoration and all of our praise. We just run to that tonight. We run to you. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Fight for me. Sing a little louder. 
sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the underneath. Sing a little louder. that we haven't seen in a while, so I'm glad you're here joining us. I'm also glad for those who are joining us online on Sunday morning, so uh, we are glad you're with us. My name is Vicki Kersnabe. I'm one of the pastors here, and um, I just want to give you some of our announcements tonight. We are going to release our middle schoolers now to their class. So if you are 6th through 8th grade, you can head out to the back on the left side, and the youth pastors will be back there to greet you and take you back to class. So if you are newer to the church, or maybe you're visiting your first or second time here, we would love to connect with you after service and say hello. So after uh, the service tonight, if you can head out to the info counter, there's something we call the connect card. We'd ask you to fill out and just provide any information that you're comfortable with, and we would love to get back in touch with you and answer any questions that you might have about the church. And if you're joining us online and you're newer to VCDC, just send us an email to info at vcdc.org and we'll give you a call. Now, as you know, we're not collecting the offering at this time. So if you did bring your offering with you, you can drop it at the giving boxes at the back um, at the exit doors. And then also um, this weekend, we are collecting the special offering. Um, we talked about this last week and I think Michael did. Um, there is a pastor, a vineyard pastor in Brazil that had recently passed away um, and we are taking up a collection to help his, um, his widow, Dina. So if you'd like to make that special offering, just on your check in the memo line, write missions, and you can drop it in the, either of the boxes in the back. If you're giving online, you can go to um, vcdc.org, and you can click on the missions giving box if you would like to contribute to Dina as well. So thank you so much. Um, we've always been such a generous church. And so we just thank you in advance for that. Also, is, if there is any excess that is collected uh, for Dina, the, um, we're going to be distributing that out to other vineyard pastors in Brazil. So the Jingu Missions um, organization that we work with will be determining that. All right, so go ahead and turn your attention to the screens. Sandy is going to share our announcements this week. Hi everyone, we're so glad you're joining us this weekend. Here are this week's announcements. 
we are working toward restarting our kids' classes in September at our 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. services, but we need your help. Whether you can serve twice a month, monthly, as an assistant, or even four times a year, please sign up on the church website. As Vicki shared last week, we are hosting an in-person women's ministry event titled Shine on Friday, September 11th at 7 p.m. This will be a time to gather, enjoy worship, teaching, and ministry. There's no charge, but we ask that you register so we can plan. You can sign up at bcbc.org. Michael will be hosting Quick Connect in the cafe after each service next weekend, September 5th and 6th. This is a great opportunity for guests to explore their next steps as they move toward greater connection with our church family. No signups are necessary and kids are welcome. Just a quick FYI, the building will be closed and the staff will not be in the office next Thursday and Friday, September 3rd and 4th due to septic system maintenance. Because small groups are such a large part of church life here at BCDC, each week we like to highlight one. This week we are featuring a new group, the Mount Vernon Area Home Group, meeting in person in the Centerburg Mount Vernon area the first and third Friday evenings of each month. Leaders are Annie and Eric Johnson. We have lots of groups, mixed women's and men's. You can find info on all of them either at our website or on the small group card wall in the lobby. Please call before you visit to confirm when and how a group is meeting. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Can I just also plug that that is our third new group that has started in the midst of COVID. So I think that's really cool. And we have another one, I think, starting up soon. So check out the small groups. Um, so we're going to pray for a church. We pray for a church every weekend in the area. We're praying for Hope Lutheran Church, pastored by Benjamin and his wife, Christine Meyer. So let's pray for them. God, we just thank you for Hope Lutheran. We thank you for just their faithfulness and serving you and sharing the gospel and just serving this community. I just pray for um, just endurance during this time, Lord. I pray that they would keep their eyes fixed on you and uh, you would be the head of their church and the head of their leadership. So we pray blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're kicking off a new series tonight. So give a warm welcome to Andrew Hudson. Thanks, Ricky. Hey, it's great to see so many faces. Great to be with you guys. Um, like Vicki said, I get the pleasure of quick kicking off a new series that we are calling Unwrapped, but we're going to be looking at spiritual gifts uh, over the next number of weeks. And, and when I say that phrase, spiritual gifts, I imagine that some of you, that brings some excitement. You're like, yes, let's talk about that. Others of you, that's probably like some nervousness. Oh no, what are you going to make me do? And others, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I don't know any different. So I'm excited to dive into this topic because I think it's super important. It's really critical for us to understand spiritual gifts, to grow in the unique roles that God has for us to play in the part of, of his kingdom. And so uh, throughout, when you look, depending on your background, your church background, if you, you know, have been part of the vineyard for a long, long time, if you come from a different church background, if, if church in just general is really new to you, uh, you may have different views on what that phrase means, spiritual gifts. Some, some churches historically have taught that uh, certain gifts are maybe more important or have been elevated in importance. Others have kind of downplayed certain gifts or, or said certain gifts maybe don't really happen or exist as much as they used to back in the time of the New Testament. But, uh, but I, see, I think what we see in the Bible is that the New Testament writers, Peter and Paul, they address spiritual gifts as something that all Christians can expect to experience at some level or to some degree. And it especially seems really important part of what Paul taught every new church that he planted. And so what do I mean by a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift, by definition, my definition is going to be this. It's a God-given special ability to a believer by the Holy Spirit to share God's love and to benefit the body of Christ. It's a God-given special ability 
uh, given to a believer by the Holy Spirit for sharing God's love and benefit of others. And traditionally, there are about five passages in the New Testament that people refer to when they're talking about spiritual gifts and that show different lists of what some of these gifts might be. So if you want to throw up that chart, okay, that's pretty small. So get your reading glasses out. You have 30 seconds. There will be a test. Go. No, I'm just kidding. No, there's no test. But, and, and we're not going to go through all of these, even in this whole series. Definitely not tonight. I just kind of wanted to give you kind of an idea of, hey, this is some of the things that we're talking about. If you look at that list, you may notice that some of them are, many of them are mentioned in more than one list. Many of them appear uh, more often. You know, in fact, some of them appear four out of the five, I think. Uh, some of them you could technically word or say, oh, that's kind of the same thing as this. That those are kind of synonyms. So depending on how you're counting, most scholars would say that there's somewhere between 15 to 22 different spiritual gifts mentioned in the New Testament. And that's, uh, that's very debatable, but, but that's usually kind of where they fall. Now you could argue, you could argue that there are more than that that aren't mentioned in the New Testament. There are ones that we see kind of in the Old Testament, different parts of the New Testament, besides those passages, that you could say, well, that's kind of like a spiritual gift too. If you, for example, in Exodus 31, there's a story where the Holy Spirit comes and empowers uh, two men to build the ark. And it, they basically have the gift of artisanship or the gift of craftsmanship. Uh, in the book of Judges, Judges, I think, 14, if I'm, that's the story of Samson, where Samson has this supernatural strength. And you could argue that's the gift of supernatural strength. I have been praying for that gift for a long time, and God doesn't seem to be giving that one to me. But, uh, but, 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 all, no matter how, what you're talking about, what list you're using, the, never in Scripture does it say that these lists are exhaustive. Never does it say that this is the only options of how God might give spiritual gifts to his people. And so we're going we're gonna to kind of dive in and, and, and look at a few of them over this series. But we're going to primarily focus on the first one on the left, the 1 Corinthians 12 uh, 8 through 10. And so I want to read that passage to you. In fact, I'm going to back up just a little bit and read starting in verse 4. And you can follow along in your Bible or on your Bible app if you want to. But it says this. Uh, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 12, 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation, manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits or discernment to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So there are nine, there are nine different listed gifts in that passage that we're going to be taking some time over the next number of weeks exploring. Well, what, is, what does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, how does that play out? And, uh, and we're going to, I think it's helpful to think of them in kind of three different categories to kind of see some similarities and differences. So if you want to put up that next chart, you're like, this is like school, all these charts. But, uh, but I want to challenge us to think of it kind of like this. Uh, the eyes of God, the mouth of God, and the hands of God. That, that God wants to give spiritual gifts, and some of them are almost like having his eyes. How does, how does, God, what is, how does God see things? How does he see the world? How does he see and know things? The gift of wisdom knowledge, discernment, the word of God. What is it? How does God speak? The gift of prophecy. How does God speak? Tongues, interpretation of tongues. And then the hand of God. What does it look like when God touches you? And there's healing that happens. There's miracles that happen. There's faith that happens. What does that look like? Now, before we dive into those like headlong and deep and go specific, we need to first understand what is the heart of God? To about spiritual gifts. And so that's what tonight's talk is entitled, The Heart of God in Regard to Spiritual Gifts. And so what is the heart of God 
when it comes to spiritual gifts. What is his, what is his heart? First of all, it's so that we are not uninformed. So that we are not uninformed. In 1 Corinthians 12, 1, we didn't read this earlier. It was a few verses back, but it's, Paul says this. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Paul doesn't want a single Christian, he doesn't want a single follower of Jesus to miss out on unwrapping the spiritual gifts that he has given us through the Holy Spirit. Because, because we just don't know about them, or we just don't understand how they work. And if we're unaware of how God might want to empower us in the possible ways he might want to use his gifting through us, then we may miss out on a major part of his plan for us to partner with him and to be used by him. If we don't make space to talk about spiritual gifts and learn about them from others, then how are we going to know what to look for, right? How are we going to know? So take prophecy, for example. If we don't learn examples of how God prophetically speaks by looking at the scripture, by looking at stories in the Bible, and then by talking to people who, who experience the gift of prophecy, then how are we going to know if we are gifted uh, with prophetic words? How do we know if God wants to give us that spirit? We don't know, right? We have to be able to learn about it and to not be uninformed about it. I remember a number of years ago, I was in school at Ohio State, and a friend of mine, her name was Patty, she kind of, she was a couple years older than me, and she kind of took me under her wing as like a spiritual mentor to me. I remember she invited me to read the book, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Did anybody read that book? In, in many, in many of you? Super popular book a number of years ago. Very good. Transform the way that I see myself in God's eyes. Transform, like it says, help me to realize I do have a purpose. And God has a big plan for me, an important plan for me. But in, in that process, I remember one time we got together, we, we were talking about one of the chapters, and afterwards she said, hey, why don't we pray? Why don't we spend some time praying? Now, I grew up going to church. Like, I, I grew up in a church, went to church every Sunday. And so I was praying, that sounds great. Yeah, that's fine. No big deal to me. So we kind of sat in some silence for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, she opened her mouth and there were words coming out of her mouth that sounded like total gibberish to me. Should have bought a Honda, what about a Kia? Should have bought a Honda, what about a Kia? And I thought, what in the heaven is going on right now? And why are you giving me car buying advice? Right? Like, what is this whole... Honda Kia thing. Like I'd, no, I'd never, never in my life had I ever heard anybody speak in tongues before. My mind was like, what is going on? And I remember just being confused, having lots of questions. Uh, but I remember just the experience of that because it, up until that point, I had made the assumption basically that tongues just didn't happen anymore that that was, you know, back around the time of the Bible, you know, that because I'd never heard anybody do it. And anytime I'd heard anybody do it, I assumed they were faking it. I assumed it was just for show or whatever. I had never met a Christian that I trusted, that I uh, saw authentically walking a life with Jesus, just I'd never met one personally, that spoke in tongues. And so for me, that was like an eye-opening experience, mind-blowing experience. Well, so I began to explore that and just and to research that and to learn about that and to, and to press into it. Well, what do I think about that? And God, what do you want me to, sh what do you want to show me about that? And exploring some of those gifts. God does not want us to be uninformed when it comes to spiritual gifts. By the way, I do own two Hondas. That's just so uh, prophetic. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but that's just random side note. Okay, what is God's heart towards us? It's to not be uninformed and it's it's to not think of them as natural talents. They're not natural talents. Uh, you can be a skilled musician. You can be a skilled surgeon, skilled basketball player, whatever. But those things aren't spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are either humanly impossible, like miracles, or they enhance a natural talent like teaching, but goes beyond your human ability. Let me explain what I mean by that, that part about enhancing it. So, Many of you know, for a dozen years before being a pastor, I was a school teacher. And so over those 12 years, I grew in my skill and ability to be a teacher, to explain things in ways that my fourth graders could understand them. At least they sort of understood them. <laughs> but, but I grew in that kind of capacity over time. 
But then as I began to teach more about the Bible, I began to realize like, hey, there are times where I'm just teaching, right? I'm just making logical explanation of things. And then there are times where the thoughts coming into my mind are not my thoughts. And the words coming out of my mouth are not my words. And the way, the power that's behind them is not from me. There's a difference. And so that's where God can take a natural talent and enhance it through a spiritual gift. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Tracking with some of you. You got a nod. I can't see your mouth, remember? <laughs> uh, what else? What God's heart is also that uh, spiritual gifts, we would, they would regularly be expressed. They are intended to be regularly expressed, not rarely expressed. That we should be regularly seeing spiritual gifts all the time to build up the church family. In Paul's planting of churches and in training of new Christians, he wanted these new followers of Jesus to understand and to practice spiritual gifts when they got together to worship, when they were in each other's homes, when they were in one-on-one -on -one conversations. That was just kind of part of the, the deal. The, what, this is what it looks like to be a Christian is to grow in understanding the Holy Spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit in these ways. It seems to me that uh, there are gifts that are easier for us to maybe unwrap in our minds a little bit. Maybe, maybe ones that we, spend, we tend to spend a little bit more time investing and in giving space for those things. And then some of the gifts that, well, maybe they're just a little bit more mysterious. They're a little bit more uncomfortable. I think we, we, we tend to kind of shy away from those gifts often at times. And, uh, and I think that um, we should have the ex expectation that gifts should be expressed regularly. And we should be looking for the activity of God in all of, all of these ways. Not just on a weekend where we're preaching about it or uh, during a season of revival, but it should be part of the normal expectation of being a Christian. And I think yeah, the vineyard, I think we do a fairly good job of that. We, we make space for a lot of that kind of stuff prophetic words or you know we pray for people to be healed but i recognize hey we can always grow and i'm sure as i as you look at that list of gifts there's some areas where i think we can grow in. and i i believe that part of the reason god has challenged us to do this series is because he does want us to grow in some of those ways that maybe we've kind of not given as much time and space for god's heart towards spiritual gifts is also not only for the elite it's not only for the elite we see God's desire to give all of his kids gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 4.10 says this, God has given each one of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. He has given each one of you. God has given spiritual gifts to every single Christian. Last weekend, if you were here or watching online, Michael uh, gave the sermon and at the end, he said, hey, I just have a, a sense, a prophetic sense that God is going to give two or three people in the room uh, a picture or a word or something to come up and share. And sure enough, at the end of every single one of our weekend services, we had at least two or three people come up, sometimes four, five, six, I think, in the one service. And what I noticed about that was the great diversity of people that came up. We had somebody who was a, a small group leader, who was a very mature Christian, who had been uh, walking with Jesus for a really long time, come up and give a word. And we had a 10-year-old boy come up and give a super prophetic word. It was powerful. We had, we had somebody who was on our advisory council, who's a, a, a high leadership, you know, in the church, come up and give a word. And we had somebody who has come, I think, maybe twice to the church, a couple times. Like, they're like almost brand new, give a word. And what that shows us, what that shows us is what we always like to say in the vineyard is that everybody gets to play, right? Everybody gets to play. And when it comes to spiritual gifts, that is so true that God wants to give each and every single one of us gifts to use and to unwrap. Next point, at least one, but not all. Again, in, in 1 Peter 4, each one of us has at least one spiritual gift, but nobody gets them all. Nobody gets them all because of the heart of, the heart of God is that we would be interdependent upon each other, that we would need to rely on on each other to, to, uh, to join in with the Holy Spirit. I don't think it's coincidence. It's not coincidence at all that right after this section in 1 Corinthians 12 that I stopped reading in verse 11, that the next part is the famous part 
where it talks about how we are the body of Christ and we are many parts but one body. And the eye can't say that I don't need the hand and the hand can't say that I don't need the foot. We all need each other. And then Paul goes right back in after that and ends with this. In verse 29, he says this, are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. He says, of course not. God's heart is that we understand that he is the gift giver and that we don't get to open every single gift under the Christmas tree. They're not all for us. That some of them have the name, our names on them, but some of them have the names of our brothers and sisters on them. Now, nobody gets left out, but it is God's plan to make, to, to make it so that we are dependent upon each other. And we're going to talk more about that later on in this series. Uh, so I don't want to go too much into that. But the last thing I want to say is that uh, about spiritual gifts is that they are grace gifts. They're grace gifts. God's heart is for us to understand that the spiritual gifts are grace gifts. Now, there are a variety of words used to talk about spiritual gifts in the Bible. And one of those words in the Greek uh, is the word charisma. Charisma. And it means so much more than charm or personality. It literally means a gift freely given. It comes from the word charis, which means grace. It's a grace gift. It's a gift of grace. It's a gift of grace. And to be a Christian means that we are all meant to be charismatic Christians in the sense that because we've all been recipients of the greatest grace gift of, of all. We've all been recipients of the gift of salvation, of salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross, but also through the spiritual gifts that God has given us. We get to partner with the Holy Spirit to spread little droplets of grace, little gracelets around all the people around us, around the world. I love this quote. It says, a, a charism is what might be called a gracelet, a droplet of the vast ocean of God's grace. It is a tangible expression of God's grace in a person's life in the form of a capacity to act in a way that surpasses human power. A gracelet, like a little droplet in the huge ocean of God, of God's grace that's tangible and that is beyond our human ability. That's what we as Christians get to spread. Uh, we get to spread little droplets of grace that we unwrap and then utilize, the, utilizing our spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. And the, God's ocean is so vast, it's so wide, it's so big, we'll never encounter the full capacity of it. There's no way we could, we could, could encounter all of the droplets of water or droplets of grace that God has and is. Now let me end with this. Let me end with this story. As tradition, right, we often get uh, birthday get, uh, bir gifts on our birthday, right? right? My birthday happens to be next Thursday. So if you're looking to give me a gift, I like uh, Amazon gift cards, Chipotle, and Teslas. You can all go in together and get me one. That's right. Uh, but, no, but seriously, uh, I was remembering, since my birthday's coming, I was remembering when I was 18, my parents decided they wanted to surprise me with a really special gift. They, said they, were, they were really excited. So at seven in the morning, they came in and shook me awake and said, Andrew, you gotta get up, you gotta get up. It's your birthday, we got a special prize for you. And I was thinking, what are you doing? It's seven in the morning. I'm 18. I'm capable of hibernating for days on end. And the, my first birthday wish is I wanna sleep in, right? But no, they were like, no, you gotta get up now. You gotta go to the window and look outside the window. And so I, I stumble out, I go to the window and I look outside and there is a hot air balloon out in the front like field in front of our house hot air balloon sitting there. They say, we got your hot air balloon ride. You got to go right now. It's 7 a.m. I think they enjoyed torturing me a little bit. And I'm pretty sure I would have probably made it about 2,000 feet in the air if it wasn't for my dad before I realized I didn't have pants on. So thanks, dad, for uh, making that known so I didn't look embarrassed. But I got to ride in this hot air balloon ride, and it was awesome. It was, it was exhilarating. It was a little scary. I think I realized I don't, yep, there you go. There's a picture. Uh, you can't, y'all take my word for it. My mom dug up and found that picture of, of me getting to go on that ride. But uh, it was a little nerve wracking, but it was so cool. We get in the basket. You know, it's not a very big basket. And I, I think my knuckles were white from gripping the sides the whole time. I realized I don't, don't really enjoy heights. Uh, but the flames come up. 
feet up the air inside and start to lift off the ground. You get up there, you get up like 2,000 feet in the air, and it's so quiet. There's no sound at all. And you're just kind of going with the wind, right? Now, why do I tell you that story? Why do I tell you that story? Well, in this exact passage, in 1 Corinthians 12, in verse 1, when it talks about spiritual gifts, it's not actually the word charisma. It's a different word for spiritual gifts. It's, called the, it's the word pneumatica or pneumaticon, and it literally means spirituals or spiritual things, but it comes from the word pneuma. It comes from the word pneuma, which means spirit, breath, air, or wind. Now, when my mom and dad gave me this birthday gift, flying in a hot air balloon, the experience was both exciting and terrifying at the same time. But we would have never have gotten off the ground if it wasn't for air. We would have never traveled in any direction if it wasn't for the wind, if it wasn't for the pneuma. The same is true with spiritual gifts. When we experience a new birth in Jesus, when we are born again as Christians, we are given birthday gifts. We are given spiritual gifts for us to unwrap and utilize. But but we have to partner with the Holy Spirit and we have to be willing to get in the basket. We have to be willing to get in the basket. We have to be willing to take some chances And it's going to be a little scary, and it's going to be a little exciting all at the same time. But if we're willing to do it, if we're open to do it, uh, then we get to experience the thrill and the excitement of partnering with the Holy Spirit and and to experience the wind, to experience the pneuma. God may want to work, you know, through us in different ways, in different spiritual gifts. He may give you the gift of prophecy, but if you never open your mouth, how would you ever know? He may want to use you to heal somebody, but if you're never willing to take the chance to pray for somebody, how would you know? Ultimately, it's, it's up to God. It's up to the air. It's up to the wind. It's up to the Holy Spirit. But just imagine the adventure that God wants and has planned for us. If we're willing to get in the basket, if we're willing to partner with the Holy Spirit uh, to discover how God made us, how God made us to be used. So if the worship team wants to start to make their way back out, um, here's my hope. Here's my hope and my prayer for you guys for tonight as we worship, as we go into some ministry time a little bit later for this whole series. Here's my hope. My hope is that all of you, every single one of you would know that you are a gifted son or daughter of God that he has given you good gifts to unwrap. That nobody gets missed out. That nobody gets left behind. That God has specific spiritual gifts for you to utilize and to grow in. That's part of his plan for you. That's part of being a son or daughter of God. And how do we we figure that out? How do we do that? Well, first, got to learn about him. We can't be uninformed like we talked about. First thing. Then it's, it's trial and error. It's giving things a, in, in safe spaces. It's giving things a try and seeing how it goes. And not don't, don't get upset if you fail or it doesn't come, ha- happen like you think. And then the third thing is that we, we are open to feedback. We're open to getting encouraging feedback from other Christians. We do those things. I'm so confident that throughout tonight, throughout this series, throughout the next season of our life as a church family at BCDC, that God is going to start to show many of you spiritual gifts that you never knew you had and maybe blow on the flames of some ones that maybe you've kind of not been practicing it or have have left the wayside or kind of gone. Uh, It's been a long time. So that is my hope and prayer. So that is my hope. So we're going to, why don't we all stand up? Let's worship. And as we're worshiping, um, if you get a picture or a word, you can come. I'll be over here. Vicky's over here too. You can come over and let us know uh, what you're thinking, and you can share that. Uh, but let's not forget. Let's not forget, and let's be reminded of the truth that we are gifted children of God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship.
do something together. If you could just, if we together could picture Jesus just like standing right in front of you, in front of us. And if you would just would pray to him and thank him for what you love about him, sing to him what you love about him, speak it out. His presence is here. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we
just come, Holy Spirit. We just want more of your presence, Lord. We just invite more of your presence. What do you want to do, Holy Spirit, with the rest of our time? least one word I want to, yeah, awesome. Come on up and. Uh, I just got a picture of a little baby when they're, oh, mine walked at nine months, but maybe closer to a year. (laughs) And as parents, we watch them take their first steps, and they're so klutzy and clumsy, and they fall down numerous times. But that doesn't bother us as parents one iota because we worship them and we just treasure every step they try to make. And they just keep on going and keep on going until they're walking. And I felt that that was a lot like when we try to step out and dare to do something that we feel the Spirit might be leading us to. Yeah. We're afraid to do it because we might fall down, we might look klutzy, um, but I can guarantee you you will know if you're supposed to do it because you won't want to <laughs> you'll argue with yourself at great length before you dare to have to step yeah. out that first time yeah. but I encourage you all to just uh, uh, dare to do what God's calling you to do and know that we will all look at you as precious babies uh, and help you stand you back up if need be. What a time. great, what a great encouraging word. Yeah, awesome. I had a couple other thoughts too. I felt like just to kind of go right along with that. Like I just felt like that. There's a f- number of you. There's going to be a number of you this weekend. Maybe you're watching at home. Where you just you you feel really unworthy of being used by God. You think no, yeah, but that's not for me. That's for other. Christians. You feel like, I don't see God using me in any way like that, like in any kind of capacity. I don't think I have any giftings. Maybe you've been hurt by somebody in the church in the past, and, and it's just kind of, pushed, you felt pushed away from that. But if, if you at all feel any, like that, that in any way, I wanna, we want to pray for you today, because that is just not the truth. It's just not the truth. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are gifted son or daughter of the king. That is the truth. So we want to pray for you. Uh, also, just, uh, if, I, just to, if you just, you know, as we're going to step into this series and talk about some of these things in the next couple weeks, if you just want to say, hey, I want to be open to experiencing more gifts. I want to be open to experiencing more uh, gifts that maybe I've never known or, or had, or maybe I've I've always kind of said, oh, I've, these are my two gifts, and these are the two I've used for the last 20 years. Well, maybe, what if God has other gifts that uh, he has for you. If you just want to be, as a, as a way of saying, I want to be open to that, I would encourage you as well to get prayer. And then when I was standing over here during worship, I felt like there was a line going right down here. Dan, from you, to Tanya, back to you, Dan. Yep, all, yeah, Dan to Dan. Like the four of you or whatever, I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, bam, right on the four of you. So if you're willing and open to get prayer, today. I don't know what that is. God will, God will, God knows what it is, but just to have somebody bless whatever's going on right there, I would encourage you to do that. So, and then, Annie, did you have a? I, I do. I have a few things. Um, I had a picture uh, this week as I was praying um, of cafeteria tables in our sanctuary, and um, people were sitting down and eating soup, um, and they were really weary and tired. Um, their hearts were heavy, mm. and the soup had no taste at all and then one by one um, people's taste buds started coming to life and they were really enjoying the soup and I really um, the verse from Psalm 34 came to me uh, taste and see that the Lord is good Mm. and I really feel like the soup was uh, the Lord's presence uh, warm and comforting and um, that maybe you feel like your taste buds have been not working or that your awareness of the Lord's presence um, has been dull 
and I really feel like he would like to um, to remind you um, that he's here and just to awaken your taste buds. So if that speaks to anybody, uh, we'd love to pray for you tonight. And then lastly, I had a picture of a woman on a beach. Um, there were seashells all over the beach, and she was picking up each shell and listening um, for the Lord's voice, and um, she couldn't hear anything. And then it zoomed out, and um, the woman was actually inside of a seashell and uh, surrounded by the Lord's presence and protection and uh, could clearly hear his voice speaking to her. So if that speaks to you tonight and maybe you would like to be able to hear the Lord's voice more, um, we'd love to pray for you yeah. about that as well. So there's a lot of things on the table there. Uh, if you want prayer for any of that or anything else, if you want just prayer tonight in general, we'd love to pray for you. So, so who, raise your hand real quick if you want to get prayer, if you're oh, willing to do Okay, so a number of hands going around the room. Boom, boom, boom. Keep them high. Lots of people. Lots of people. Yeah, we got that. Okay, great. Uh, so look around the room and, and listen, you don't, those of you who are going to go pray for these people, you're gifted sons and daughters of the king. You are. There's nothing, nothing special that you have to try to muster up or say. Just say what the Lord gives you to say. Just ask them what they want prayer for and bless them and let the Holy Spirit uh, move through you, right? And we're going to worship one more song. So again, keep them up high and let's make sure everybody gets prayer who wants prayer. And, uh, and then I'll come up and close this. We need lots of people to move around the room and if you're willing to pray. Oh, the depths up of your mercy that saves and sets me free and the waves of forgiveness your blood that covers me pour it out pour it out oh the depths of your mercy that saves a wretch 
Lord is renewing our minds. Pour it out. Renewing our strength. Pour it out. Pour it out. I just have a picture of him just pouring oil over each of our heads. a prophetic word a little bit ago just of, of, of Jesus literally standing in front of every single one of us every single one of us and some of us were looking right at him and some of us were unaware that he was staring at us in the face and there's just, just this opportunity of Jesus saying I see you I see you I see you I made you and I know what I made you for and I know how I made you and would you trust me would you trust me to, to show you just who you are, your purpose, your giftings, all of that stuff? And so, so this, I would encourage you uh, as, we, as, we do, as we go today to, um, to just embrace that truth. And, I, and just actually, right, right here, Derek, I, I just have a sense of like, just pray for the gift of healing on him. Just, just watching his hands, I just felt like the Lord is saying, I want to give, uh, impart to him the gift of healing. So just take a minute and do that. But, but let me just kind of close the rest uh, of us out here. So, Heavenly Father, we just, we thank you, Lord, that you are so gracious to us that you would want to give us grace gifts that you, Holy Spirit, want to come living inside of us and, and partner with us. And let us be a part of what you're doing in your kingdom. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us all to be open, to be used by you more, to be willing to stumble and fall on our face a little bit maybe, but, but so that we can learn to walk in the way that you've made us to walk. I pray, Lord, that each of us would know that we are sons and daughters of you, that we are gifted sons and daughters of you. And we just, we just pray in excitement and anticipation of how you're going to move and stretch us and grow us uh, in this coming season. For that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Hey, if you came wanting to give uh, to our special offering, you know, remember, or just give in general, you can drop it off in the boxes before you leave, but especially for the special offering since that's just this weekend or you can give online at bcdc.org. Bless you guys. Have a great rest of your weekend.